I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and uh, welcome all to our 2019 annual meeting. While uh, Ian uh, gets us connected, uh, why don't we bring the roll call, Amanda? Brad Anderson, Here. Charlie Clark, Here. Bob DeMillionaire, Here. Doyle Downey, Here. Nick Fela, Amanda Galbraith here, Dick McLeod, Here. Scott Parenteau, Here. and Ronnie Rell is excused. Okay. The members of the board made it back to this meeting, so we're good. We got it for them, and we can proceed. Uh, I'll ask for uh, the board if we have any amendments to the agenda. This is pretty much a standard agenda that folks use for years at the annual meeting. No amendments. So we'll move on in the times. Bring me. <laughs> Talk fast. I'm, I'm hurrying. Uh, reading of the minutes. This is a little clumsy in several ways. Um, these are the minutes from our 2018 meeting. It's been a whole year since we've had that meeting. Um, and then we read the minutes here and approve them. Everybody has to meet a whole year to find out what happened. I think what I'd like to do is, uh, if Amanda's okay with this, is let's get in the habit of uh, approving the minutes from this 2019 meeting at our November regular board meeting. That way they'll get published in advance. I think that makes more sense. So I'll go through the minutes from 2018 uh, to try to go as quickly as I can, and uh, we'll go from there. Probably I'll use the microphone. Okay, so the meeting started at 101 uh, with Mitch Spring opening the meeting and calling for a roll call. Charlie Clark, Nick Fela, Dick McLeod, Mitch Spring, and Doug Wilson were present. Gordon Brinker, Bob DeMillionaire, Doyle Downey, and myself were absent and excused. Um, <clears throat> because of that uh, large number of absences, we only had five directors, which was not a quorum. Uh, but the annual meeting is dictated at this time, so we proceeded with the meeting But any board actions were deferred to a following meeting. If there was a decision need to be made, we did it at the uh, November 2018 board meeting. So Mitch Spring uh, went through and read the minutes from the 2017 meeting. And as I said, due to lack of a quorum, we approved those minutes uh, at the uh, November regular board meeting. The uh, officer reports, uh, I wasn't here, so there was no secretary report. Uh, the treasurer report, Dick McLeod uh, covered for Doyle and presented the report in his absence. And the high level uh, was that uh, overall the club finances are uh, in good shape uh, with the uh, relatively recent approval of the dues assessment and the dues increase. And <clears throat> while the number of members uh, continue continued to decline at that point, uh, member activity revenue was up 5%. And uh, Royal went on to thank the general manager, the finance and audit committee, and our outside consultants, or I should say accounting firm, for the fine work they've been doing in keeping the club on track financially. Mitch Spring presented uh, his annual report, uh, starting with uh, thanking his fellow board members for their support over the course of the year. He also complimented uh, Ian Dockerill on the work he's been doing to improve the club operations and the membership experience. Uh, he went on to thank the Lost Lake Woods staff for the good job they've been doing under challenging conditions, and they've stepped up to uh, get more done with less. And finally, he thanked all the volunteers for the great work they've been doing, and as always, they're there the backbone of the club. Uh, reports from uh, committees, uh, future planning, Tony Haight presented the future planning committee report and he noted that the committee was recently reinstated this year and that they'd held so, uh, four meetings so far in 2018. That committee had gone dormant for a while. Um, and they're working on 16 capital improvement project requests. Uh, they've taken four forward to finance and audit to be included in the 20-year capital plan. The other 14 are still under development. 
Uh, finance and audit committee report was presented by Ian Dockrell for Kerry O'Toole, who was unable to attend. The report highlighted uh, committee accomplishments in the following seven areas. Uh, one was uh, analysis and recommendations that were used to support the dues increase ballot proposal. They were working with the board of directors on the Lost Lake Woods Club vision statement. Uh, they recommended uh, <coughs> a proposed business plan for the club. They reviewed the club's investments and the investment strategy. They've reviewed and we're in the process of rewriting the Lost Lake Woods uh, Financial Policy and Procedures Manual. And they revised the 20-year capital planning tool and updated its contents. And they've been providing uh, ongoing oversight and review of the outside uh, accounting services. Conservation, uh, Doug Wilson presented that report for the committee. He hi highlighted uh, uh, major accomplishments, uh, building the fish habitat structures and the fish stocking program, researching the spring deer mortality in the subdivision, monitoring and containment of the oak wilt epidemic, planting of white oak trees, treating invasive plant species, uh, field expansion and planning of food plots, and the shooting preserve maintenance and updated rules. <coughs> Going on to golf, Mitch Spring presented the uh, golf committee report for Jim Mead. Uh, he noted that it was a challenging year due to the weather. The season started late because of the heavy April snowfall, and then uh, opening was driven into May. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Throughout the summer, in relatively heavy rains, it uh, frequently uh, reduced the amount of rounds played. Despite the weather, there's been a lot of good activity on the course. It noted that uh, public play was up 11% at uh, 773 rounds played. Um, <clears throat> they now have 76 uh, people participating in the Monday League, and the women started a Wednesday League. And he also noted that uh, 129 youth participated in golf camp. And uh, as usual, everybody had a lot of fun with that. He uh, <clears throat> which closed by complimenting the golf staff and the volunteers for keeping the course in a beautiful condition and running smoothly. House and Beach, uh, Charlie Clark presented the uh, report for the committee. He noted that the committee had met with Michelle Bailey, the interior designer, hired to develop uh, large interior design concepts. Uh, the committee will continue to interface with her as needed to provide feedback on her proposals. Other areas where the committee's been very active is in developing improvement projects for the lodge to be included in the 2019 budget. Some examples were uh, purchasing the new kayaks and accessories, and the storage rack, and other improvements to the beach, and major upgrades to the pavilion to increase its usage. Also, uh, lodge floor and window upgrades. Subdivision and grounds, uh, Mitch Spring prevented, uh, presented the uh, Subdivision and Grounds Committee report that was prepared by Tammy hurtman -Dyka. Over the course of the year, the committee has assessed 28 Lost Lake Woods Club building applications and addressed a number of property complaints. Uh, the committee was advising all members to make sure they submit a club building application before doing any improvements on their property that could affect drainage, appearance, setbacks, or other requirements. The committee is very responsive to these applications and is there to help ensure that the project is done properly and the appropriate government, local government requirements are also met. Lost Lake Woods Members Committee, Marlene Rogers presented the report. She stated that uh, started by reminding everybody the mission of the Members Committee is to promote fellowship and volunteerism within the club. Uh, she reviewed the many activities that they've sponsored and special events and noted that the committee has raised uh, $18,481.81 uh, that year and uh, that was done through a wide range of activities and they currently had uh, $42,000 in their bank account. Uh, she also noted that uh, at that point during the year, the, they had provided $5,388 to support other committee activities, and they would consider making greater contributions if they were asked. Uh, so she 
basically uh, requested that people contact the members committee if they've got some good ideas on projects that needed to be funded. It's a good problem to have, uh, having more money than requests. Uh, Nick Fayla presented for the promotions committee uh, and the report that Bob James prepared. Uh, he discussed the behind the po red post promotional campaign that the committee had been working on to increase awareness of the club and what we have to offer in, in terms of attracting new members. In addition, he noted that the communications committee, which is an ad hoc committee under promotions, has been working on a number of ways to improve communications with the membership. The next report was shooting sports, and Kevin Fertle provided that report for Skeet and Trap. Uh, noted that 2018 was another good year at the range uh, with more special events and activities for youth and charities. Overall, shooting was down 11% for the year, but uh, found that uh, trap was up 42%, but skeet and five stand was down over 20%. I think the biggest cause for that decline was the league activities were a little slow that year, but uh, we did make it up from a revenue perspective with a, a significant increase in special events, which we charge more for, so the revenue per target thrown is higher. The uh, committee's big successes were noted uh, in the youth and charity activities. Uh, we had a very successful Canadian trap shoot that year. It's continuing the trend uh, ever bigger and better. And uh, this was the first year we inv involved the Alpena High School hockey team and participated in this, mostly because most of the members are so miserable at using a hockey stick to throw a clay target. It's just hard for their teammates to hit it. <laughs> But uh, it was a great opportunity to get the kids involved. Uh, some of them hadn't shot before, and, uh, so they got uh, some exposure to shooting, and the uh, club got exposure through the local media. In the end, we were able to donate $500 to their team. Uh, we also uh, sponsored the 4-H shooting team uh, that was teaching 12 high school students uh, the shooting sports and provided mentorship and regular practice opportunities. <clears throat> and uh, in addition, the club had sponsored uh, several Rough Grouse Society fundraising events. Kevin also gave special recognition to longtime member Sally Hubbard on her 88th birthday. Sally is a champion skeet shooter who was instrumental in building the Lost Lake Club uh, skeet range some 40 years ago, and she's been active ever since. So that was the uh, shooting sports report. Uh, for campgrounds, Charlie presented the uh, annual report for the committee. The uh, committee's mission is to improve the Lost Lake Woods campgrounds, to improve member satisfaction, and recruit new members since the campground is often the gateway for people to enter the club. The committee was uh, basically active through sponsoring work bees, and they accomplished uh, many projects with two big ones that were noted in the report. Uh, one was a uh, a deep cleaning of the bathhouse and facilities, plus uh, resurfacing many of the picnic tables on the site. Uh, he thanked the volunteers for their efforts and encouraged everyone to pitch in and help, even if they weren't uh, a campground resident. <clears throat> it was also noted that the new LED lighting that was put in around the bathhouse was a big improvement with better illumination, less glare, and reduced energy consumption. He noted that the campground continues to be challenged by a lack of uh, club maintenance resources to complete the regular cleanings, lawn mowing, and ground maintenance that's really needed. <clears throat> so that was the extent of the uh, committee reports. Member delegations, there were none. Uh, unfinished business, there was none. Uh, new business, none. And then uh, the next key item on the agenda was the announcement of the results of the uh, Board of Directors election. Uh, as chairman of the Tellers Committee, Dave Kirchy announced the results of the Board of Directors elections. A total of 448 ballots were received, 23 were rejected for cause, resulting in 20, 425 ballots being counted. The candidates were Brad Anderson, Amanda Galbraith, uh, Susan Haith, Shrim Hubbard, and Ronnie Ruel. And uh, the results of the election were that Brad, Amanda, and Ronnie were elected to three year board terms and the details uh, of uh, the election were published in the newsletter. 
and the meeting adjourned at 1.50. So that's last year's minutes. <clears throat> I, I, I can do that. <laughs> I don't know if you can, but I can. <laughs> so uh, those were the minutes. They've been distributed to the board uh, for review. Any questions? If not, uh, I would ask for a voice vote to approve the minutes as written. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The minutes are therefore approved. Okay, we'll move on to reports from the officers for 2019. And I think uh, first on the agenda is the secretary, Amanda. As a first-time board member serving in the role of the secretary has been a great learning experience for me and provided an opportunity to become more familiar with the club operations and activities. The purpose of this report is to provide the membership with a high-level recap of the secretary operations of 2019. As of September 2019, there has been 33 new members approved this year, which equates to approximately 908 total members. As of August 2019, the club has lost approximately 39 members this year for a total net loss of six members. It should be noted that these numbers are not completely accurate due to some members surrendering lots and real estate transactions make it, making it appear as if those are lost members versus lots. There has been an emphasis in, on increasing the membership in 2019 with the addition of the new membership ad hoc committee, the approval of releasing club-owned club lots in order to make them available to be sold to new members, and the continued work and focus on this topic by the promotions committee. Club records and documentation. In an effort to communicate timely information to the membership, a board action summary email has been sent to the membership soon after every monthly regular BOD meeting. The purpose of this email is to provide pertinent information to the membership before the meeting minutes are printed in the next monthly newsletter. This has been sent seven of the past nine months and will continue to be a priority when necessary. Provided monthly meeting minutes for all board-related meetings, including regular executive conference calls and study sessions. Read and signed several contracts and new member certificates. An archive of membership survey results are provided on the members-only portion of the Lost Lake Woods Club website. Due to the importance of several large items of business discussed in 2019, for example, the lodge rejuvenation project, food and beverage, the release of sale club of lots, uh, and the repair and maintenance of roads, I've attempted to produce meeting minutes that are clearly do that clearly documented decisions made, as well as details to provide context for the members to gain a better understanding of the discussion that led to those decisions. Provided a copy of the approved regular BOD meeting minutes to Lori Grush for the monthly newsletter within 24 hours of board meetings. Then previously, the board written ballots for new membership had not been saved, so in an effort to create a basic archive system, of the board votes to approve new members. I've saved the new membership applications and signed uh, BOD written ballots for 2019. I believe this practice should continue and, and improved upon. Opportunities for 2020. Integrate with the new Lost Lake Woods Club website to post BOD action summary on a monthly basis. Get feedback from the membership about what would be useful when recording meeting minutes, likes, dislikes. Work with the communications team to create a more comprehensive and complete list of membership emails to be used with eBlast, and continue to create and improve upon the archive system of board written ballots for new membership. Thank you, Amanda. I believe uh, Doyle Downey is going to cover for Ronnie Ruel, uh, who's away on the treasurer's report. Yes, I. I took some uh, liberties and, and uh, prepared a, an annual report <clears throat> filling in for Ronnie. And uh, in general, the club uh, is financially strong and in a solid position uh, relative to our operations. And certainly, everybody knows about the lodge rejuvenation on the capital side, so we will cover that here. But if we go to the, the first slide, Roberta can do a couple of these <clears throat> in, the, uh, in the regular meeting earlier today. This is member activities of the, the last few years. And uh, this is uh, the backbone of the club dues uh, uh, and member activities revenue. Uh, there's been a lot of comments, and even when uh, Scott, you read the minutes from last year, you know, voting 
the increases. <clears throat> if we look at uh, 2018 at $1.3 million that was earned in uh, member activities, uh, we're getting back, returning to the level of around $1.3 million earlier back in 2014 and 2015. So uh, during year, we're at $1.2 million uh, as of September. So again, activity revenue is as strong as
uh, for their contributions, but please know that we know that they perform a critical role and their efforts are most appreciated. And I encourage everybody, whenever you see a volunteer in action, stop and say thanks. It's just a small thing, but it's certainly one of the day. And uh, to end the recognition, I will also uh, thank uh, the board of directors for their help and support and progress we've made in the club uh, so far this year. And uh, you know, their uh, class of volunteers as well. So, uh, the job doesn't pay much, so it's all uh, in glory and recognition. So, um, <laughs> so uh, and the as the directors go, I wanted to give a special thanks to the five directors that uh, step up and took on the additional assignment of leading the effort on our five special objectives for this year. The, those special objective teams were improve the quality and value of food and beverage services. The Amanda led that one. Uh, reverse the trend in declining membership. Dick McLeod led that. Uh, developed a comprehensive plan for large rejuvenation. Well, John e was in charge of that. And hosting the inaugural Bluegrass Music Festival, and the failure was instrumental there. And uh, implementing major subdivision improvement projects, Bob DeMone there was leading that effort. Uh, all of those committees were very successful this year in getting the changes implemented that we needed. And uh, we we'll look forward to a uh, <coughs> report from each of them as we go through the rest of the reports this year. After that, uh, I just wanted to highlight some of what I think are important accomplishments uh, in various areas of the club. I'll read through them quickly, but uh, I also attach what I consider to be the future challenges in each of these areas that uh, we'll be looking forward to addressing with the 2020 board. So the first is uh, member satisfaction and club operations. I think we made a very smooth transition from the hunting season through the holidays and into the winter months. Our trout festival, our winter festival and trout Derby, I should say, were the best in recent memory with increased member participation and finally we got some good snow and ice. Uh, the club uh, implemented uh, more activities uh, to uh, get the members engaged during the slow winter months, so uh, Dart League, Thirsty Thursdays, and the Sunday member potluck dinners were particularly successful. Uh, summer 2019, uh, that was a great season. Even though it was maybe a little cooler and wetter than we would prefer, uh, more people were enjoying the club with the membership activities up significantly. As well, so we'll just keep pressing through the background noise. Oh, you just turned it off? Yeah. Great. Oh, I think that's one of those. That'd be an interesting prank to play, wouldn't it? <clears throat> okay, um, moving on. Uh, then uh, as far as, uh, again, member satisfaction and operation accomplishments, uh, through the uh, efforts of management, the staff, and uh, our volunteer team, uh, and the special objectives, the food and beverage service has been improved significantly. Uh, we've also implemented many new events uh, and activities, yoga, trivia night, the uh, new car and bike show, and of course the inaugural Bluegrass Festival were all big attractions uh, that were new to the club. So all in all, good year. The, the challenges though I see coming are, you know, how do we make Gloss Lake a true Four Seasons club? You know, there's a certain contingent of members that live here year round, so it's four seasons from their perspective, but how do we get the uh, non-resident members to participate all year long? Uh, and then we can capitalize on uh, our facilities and, and staff. 
<clears throat> what we're, uh, I think, also challenged with as part of that is adding activities and, and amenities, but how do we do that with our hiring difficulties and our aging infrastructure? How do we keep members, uh, track more member activity and new members? And then uh, I think another one in this area that we talked about at the regular meeting today is having relevant rules and regulations with a reasonable and effective enforcement. And we are constantly seeing issues with rules and regulations and violations and inconsistently treating them, and we've just got to work on that. So that, I think, is a challenge for next year as well. Uh, with rega regards to grounds and facilities, uh, we uh, accomplishments were uh, we received uh, membership approval for the construction of the Lost Lake Wood Storage Building. The building was put up in relatively quick order, and it's been used very productively uh, through the uh, tent sale. So a nice add to our ability to take care of our property. Uh, I was particularly impressed with the aggressive way that uh, conservation in the club has gone after the oak wilt problem. Uh, <clears throat> we've uh, been working very hard on developing initial plans for the comprehensive rejuvenation of the lodge, uh, including contracting an interior designer and an architectural firm to provide professional guidance at steps in the, along the plan along the process of developing the plan. Uh, we've made significant uh, appearance and equipment upgrades at the Skeet and Trap Range. Uh, very noticeable right from the road. Very nice job, Kevin. Uh, we've contracted a civil engineering firm to conduct a Lost Lake Wood subdivision draining, drainage study, which is really necessary to make uh, intelligent improvements to our road system in the future. Our, first, our future challenges are to complete the practical plan for the lodge rejuvenation and obtain membership approval and support to implement it. That's our biggest challenge, I think, next year. Um, and <clears throat> it'll, we'll talk about the finances piece of it in a minute, but that goes along with it. Uh, <clears throat> we need to execute uh, timely implementation of road and parking lot improvements. This will be an out growth of uh, the drainage study um, but you know everybody knows that Fox Road's getting in bad shape uh, the subdivision roads depending on which ones you're on have got drainage issues and potholes prevail so uh, we recognize the roads need attention but it's clear we need to do it in a engineeringly smart way and uh, finally uh, we need to obtain um, membership and board consensus on the proper balance of habitat management, timber cutting, and uh, how that conflicts with other priorities. We had some issues this year that I think we can do a better job of avoiding in the future, so uh, I look forward to having a good discussion on how we improve that process. Going on to uh, communication and recruiting, uh, we've had a significant increase in communication with the membership. Hopefully everybody's seen that. But uh, especially through the use of e-blast email notices, uh, I think we're uh, stepping up the game here considerably over last year. Uh, the board has uh, made it a priority to communicate with the membership as well. Uh, we've been sending out board meeting notices with agendas in advance of the meeting so people can see what's on the agenda and whether or not they have a need to come to the meeting. Uh, and as uh, Amanda touched on, we've been putting out summaries of the board actions from the meeting immediately after so people don't have to wait six or eight weeks to see the minutes in a newsletter. And uh, I think we've really upped the use of uh, membership surveys to obtain feedback on key club issues. We had the food and beverage survey, a membership size survey, and a security service expectation survey, and all of those provided exceptionally good information that was used to uh, decide how we were going to uh, approach resolving certain issues. Uh, we conducted uh, a workshop and two town hall meetings to get members involved in the lodge rejuvenation planning. Uh, we've implemented uh, a, a volunteer-run Lost Lake Woods ambassador program to interface with potentially new members and share the Lost Lake experience with them on a personal basis. 
I think that's a key in recruiting new members. And we continue to be active in the community and uh, charitable events, with a great example being the uh, Lost Lake Woods sponsorship of the 4-H program. You know, we're, these are young men that, and women that uh, are, you know, are the future of this community and uh, hopefully future club members. But uh, they uh, learn a lot, and it's a, a great uh, opportunity for them and us to get some uh, recognition as well. So the future challenges in the communication and recruiting, as I see it, is clearly we had, through the survey, established 1,100 members as our target. So we've got a long way to go to grow the membership to that level. Uh, I think we need to develop the new club website and other tools into the primary membership management communication method and reduce the impact of unofficial and often unreliable social media as a communication tool. It's nice for uh, certain things, but when it comes to communicating club business, uh, it's not productive. Um, more uh, comprehensive and timely information provided to the board and committees to support quality decisions. Uh, and we talked about earlier the newsletter uh, process, trying to make that more timely. I think we have to make sure that the information that the board sees uh, before making a decision is provided enough in advance to do the research and let them form an, and make an informed position. And I think another opportunity, uh, as always, is probably continuous improvement, is we need better cross-committee communication. Um, it's just, uh, you know, recognize who's involved in an issue and make sure everybody gets a voice. And then I'll end with financial performance, uh, you know, echoing uh, Doyle's assessment. The club operations continue to be on sound financial footing. Uh, management demonstrates uh, a healthy focus on providing the required services in a more efficient manner. Uh, an example being the renegotiation of the waste management contract saved the club a lot of money, um, and we continue to look for those kind of efficiencies. Uh, <clears throat> uh, another accomplishment is effective utilization of the outside accounting firm services. You know, we have definitely now can trust the financial data we're getting, and I think in the end result, uh, it's probably not costing us any more than when we were doing it in-house, particularly if you look at all the uh, error correction that we've had to deal with in the past. And then uh, another accomplishment, I think a big one, is the creation of this new 20-year capital planning tool and getting the contents in that plan updated. It's now driving the business of managing the club, and uh, <clears throat> it's, I think, giving us clear sight of what the trade-offs are and what it's going to cost us to deliver what the members expect. So future challenges in the financial area are, you know, we definitely have wage pressure facing us uh, through state-mandated increases in minimum wages and other costs, uh, that uh, insurance and so on, and, you know, the typical inflationary effects that uh, you have to deal with in the workplace. And probably our biggest challenge is that right now we have insufficient capital funds on hand and projected revenue to meet all of our 20-year capital plan needs, and that's even before we add in the lodge rejuvenation. So this continues to be our biggest problem is how do we make the improvements we need into the club, lodge included, and how are we going to pay for it? So that's uh, my report for this year. Thank you. With that, we'll move on to reports from the committees. Uh, I've got them listed on the agenda. We'll do them in that order. Uh, future planning. I don't think I have a report from the future. I, I didn't necessarily get confirmations on everything. Yeah. Uh, did we have an agreement on who's going to present it? As the liaison, I guess I better get ready to read it. Seems like they would have told you that. <laughs> Come by. What was I saying about communications? Uh, we're going to have a meeting. 
Well, if you want to, okay. we want to move on and come back to that. I, I have it. The future planning committee met three times in calendar year 2019, once in January, once in April, once in July, and the final meeting of the calendar year is scheduled in a couple of weeks. No projects were submitted by any of the committees for future planning committee review before submitting the finance and audit committee for funding consideration. In this regard, the future planning committee has failed its mission. The focus of the meetings held this year have been on how to support the club as a year-round club that, and what efforts the committee can put forth to support lodge rejuvenation. As for making the club a year-round club, the number of ideas were put forth as possible activities, but no definitive plan has been put in place. What happens to the lodge may greatly influence what types of activities will be workable in the future. A survey to gather data for this effort and help gather requirements for the rejuvenate, rejuvenation effort was put together but never sent as um, the rejuvenation effort moved at a pace the survey was not deemed necessary at that time, will be soon, but would be available and for more in member input was needed. A club management and other committees are already planning a number of off-season activities to increase member use of the club during the slow winter months. The creation of a more definitive plan was postponed until more details of the lodge improvements and feedback on the already planned activities could be obtained. The committee did discuss that all projects to be submitted in the future should have business case developed for them. A form already exists for this purpose. And the committees will take up this again at the final meeting of this year. Submitted Tony Haight. Thank you. Finance and audit. Sorry. <laughs> Finance and Audit Report. Uh, the Finance and Audit Committee has uh, reviewed operating results and monitored the budget monthly. 2020 capital and operating budgets have been prepared on a draft basis and will be finalized in November and submitted to the Board of Directors. The Finance Committee, with input from administration and other committees, has revised the 20-year plan and reviewed it with the Board of Directors. Uh, LLWC's capital reserves and capital dues structure is not sufficient to maintain the club's infrastructure into the future. The Finance Committee has recommended the capital reserve policy be revised to allow funds to be used for needed repairs to roads in the clubhouse. A capital dues increase is necessary to replenish the reserves and ensure an economically viable club. The committee has provided the Board of Directors options for a proposed $1.6 million infrastructure rejuvenation project and has recommended a $20 per month capital dues increase. Four, the internal accounting records continue to show consistency and improvement with employment of an outside controller, Straley Lamp, and Cresline. The compiled 2018 financial statement showed Lost Lake Woods Club strong financial position and improved operating results. LLWC operated the new with the new accounting principles effective for 2018 as required by AICPA and uh, generally accounted, accepted accounting principles. Six, since the audit of the financial statements was not deemed necessary with the employment of a contract controller, the committee selected operational areas to perform <coughs> internal control reviews. The golf op operation was reviewed and recommendations for improvement were provided. Other areas will be selected on an ongoing basis to ensure internal controls are operated, operating as intended. Seven, financial policies and procedure manual was reviewed and steps were <coughs> taken to update it to the current procedures and technology. As a first step in the revision process, the internal administrative and accounting staff are documenting their current policies and procedures. Eight, the club's current investment policies, including the choice of investment management firm, America were reviewed for adequacy. Respectfully submitted, Matt Howard, committee chair. Thank you, Doyle. Uh, next committee report is golf, and I think, Brad, you're going to present that one. On behalf of Jim Mead, yes. Um, members of the 2019 golf committees were Roger Atkinson, Dan Gothier, John Calstrom, Jim Mead, Wayne Romance, Ann Pearson, Keith Richard. Keith Rich, Bob Thomas, and Darlene Walker. Also attending the meetings were Jim Dennis, our golf professional, Brian Holmes, which is the golf course superintendent, and myself were in attendance. Since 2017, public golfers have enjoyed playing a golf course, and many have played more than once. 
this year through September, 1,006 public golfers have played, which is a 30% increase over last year. Activity numbers indicate that members and their guests are using the golf course less, but outside play is making up the difference. Because we do not advertise, new players are finding out about us slowly from existing players. I have talked with several players, and they have really enjoyed the golf course and remarked how well they are treated by the staff. The Monday Night Men's League continues to be a huge success with 72 golfers. The Wednesday Night, Wednesday night Women's League now has 24 ladies with the hopes of adding more players next year. Jim Dennis Junior Golf Program was a success again in 2019. A three-day golf camp which had 114 young men and women from the ages of 6 to 17 received lessons on etiquette, golf, full swing, chipping, and putting. This was followed by a two-day tournament for a long drive chipping and putting contest to, take, to test their skills that they have learned. Some of the volunteers this year were graduates of the golf program and quite possible future members of Lost Lake Woods. Thank you for Jim and all the volunteers for a job well done. As noted in the 2018 Golf Committee report, the woods cut around the golf course definitely changed the appearance. <coughs> The chipping of the large branch helped the appearance of the golf course and the Tuesday work bee spent six Tuesdays picking up sticks, branches along the golf course. Once the ferns and grass started to grow, the woodcut looked more natural and there were less neg negative comments. A special thanks goes to Mark and Jacqueline Hugh Hayes for donating the club champion's plaque in memory of Jacqueline's father, Roy Hasner, and to all the members who donated donated to the purchase of the whole and whole plaque in memory of Jim Irwin. Volunteerism and charity continues at Lost Lake Woods Golf Course. Every Tuesday morning, five to ten, five to ten men assist the golf staff with projects. Also on Monday, also on Monday, seven ladies beautify areas around the golf course and the main gate with flowers and plants. This year, the ladies were able to use the wood chips from the woodcut as mulch around the flower beds. In addition, the Rally to the Cure event sponsored by Paulette Kalstrom and Lynn Gothier was held that raised 1600 $1, which was donated to Michigan Health Foundation for new imaging equipment and free mammograms for patients in need. Dan Gothier and Jim Fosher sponsored a charity event in memory of their good friend, Stu Crawford, which raised over $13,000 for college scholarships for the Alcona High School seniors. At the, last, at the last golf committee meeting in October, we acknowledged a great job done by Jim Dennis, the PGA golf professional, and Brian Holmes, the golf superintendent, or the course superintendent. We are, we are fortunate to have a Jim as a 23 year, and Brian, a 30 year staff member of the Las Lake Woods Club, to run the day to day operations of the course. LLWC is a premier course due to their effort and dedication. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, conservation. Bob, I think you're going to present that one. Yes, I am. <clears throat> the Conservation Committee has made steady progress towards the meeting the habitat goals established by the club while providing the best value to the membership. The 2018 Deer Gate Check Station was successful using a combination of student, teacher, and member volunteers. The 2019 Deer Gate Check Station will once again be 100% volunteers. Please show your thanks by being courteous to these volunteers. The 2018-19 Timber Harvest was successful successfully completed and met the terms of our federal NRC Timber Harvest Grant, which has since been paid. Our timber contractor also completed treatment of six confirmed oak wilt sites during the winter months. The 2019-20 Timber Harvest contracts are now awarded. We have once again applied for a federal Timber Harvest Grant. <coughs> the Conservation Committee and the Equestrian Group have established a guideline to use in the event of future timber harvest activity which would inf impact the horse trails. The Conservation Committee initiated a standing 8 a.m. Thursday work bee. All members interested 
are encouraged to join us at the conservation building. The volunteers will continue to work on a variety of conservation, trail sports, and fence line projects. The committee completed a review of the no vehicles past this point signage on the undivided acreage. The BAR was approved to add signs to a few additional locations. These signs have been installed by the work bee. 50 white oaks were planted on previously treated oak wilt sites. Despite a long, cold, wet spring, the club has planted a record number of fields and openings this year. We continue to work towards updating all openings and gas wells with perennial food plot mixes and developing the soil in the fields for better yields. The second phase of the, of the successful Golden Wing Warbler Habitat Improvement Grant, uh, which is a tag alder regeneration, has been awarded. The work will, is planned for this upcoming winter. Trail Sports Subcommittee has completed an update of the signage at the horse trails and motorized trail intersections. This group has also completed the 911 trail markers and map update. The summer deer camera survey was completed this year <coughs> using member volunteers and their cameras. The event was very popular with those that participated. The club is continuing the struggle with oak wilt, beech bark disease, and invasive phragmites. A contractor has once again treated the phragmites at the teal pond. We have identified oak wilt at six additional sites this year. These sites are planned to be treated late this fall and completed this winter. Uh, the Conservation Committee is in the planning stages of the Bear Lake Boat Launch Improvement Project. We are also reviewing the self-guided woods tour and planning to update the aging woods tour stop signage. We have, we have several promotional events in the planning stages for 2020, the first of which will be an antique snowmobile rally planned this winter. Um, let's see. Oh, please fill out. I was trying to decide what that meant. Please fill out and return your hunter observation cards this year. Your data and opinions are important. Safe hunting and enjoy our great club, your conservation committee. Okay, thank you, Bob. We'll uh, move on then to House and Beach. I was under the impression Kerry was going to be here to present that. He had, he had a text or emailed me a sense that he's not going to be able to make it. I apologize for letting you know. So. No. Okay. Well, um, is it a lengthy report? Or <clears throat> hard to tell from here. Uh, I think without reading through this, we'll probably lose something. So uh, why don't we just skip it and... It'll be in the minutes package. We'll go from there. Unless, Charlie, you want it? I can read it. Oh, okay. That's what we're here. The House and Beach Committee will establish by the membership through the bylaw process to advise the Board of Directors on all matters pertaining to the lodge, dining and kitchen, swimming beach, and beach pavilion. Daily responsibility for the operation of the acti activities is delegated to the general manager by the Board. This committee is focused on recommending capital improvements and those changes in policy that will increase our member satisfaction with the use of these amenities. Committee activities during 2019 fall into three categories as follows. Capital budget recommendations and related follow-up efforts, development and preparation of board action requests, initial discussions for improvements not yet resulting in a bar. A. House and Beach has submitted three bars so far during 2019 as follows. One, in January, a recommendation to fund the Showcase Lodge guest room renovation by reallocating $16,000 from a line item in a 2019 capital budget previously approved for new floor, vinyl flooring in the main dining room. Two, in January, a recommendation to amend the 2019 capital budget by adding a line item in the amount of $64,000 
to cover repairs and improvements to the Lodge domestic hot water distribution system. Three, in May, a recommendation to begin the Lodge <coughs> renovation in phases starting in 2019 with 17 guest rooms, mainly first floor, at a cost of $250,000 using funds we currently have invested. Such renovations could begin this fall without waiting for any membership ballot approval associated with the prob probable capital dues increase needed to fund all phases of lodge renovations. B, our committee has begun discussion of three topics related to use of the lodge that are still being considered for possible recommendation to the board. The purpose of each is to make it easier for members to reserve on popular weekends such as July 4th, Trout Derby, etc., <coughs> or to make the members' overnight stay more enjoyable by not allowing the main lobby use to be restricted. Here are the topics. One, limit the number of rooms any single member can reserve in advance for holiday or club special event weekends. <coughs> Two, limit the number of rooms that a member can reserve for guests for the above weekends and possibly other typically busy summer weekends. Three, create a more effective policy that discourages last minute room cancellations, thereby not making those rooms easily available to other interested members. Four, limiting the use of main floor lobby on weekends between Memorial Day and Labor Day for member sponsored events or any events attended mainly by non-members with the exception of member hosted weddings for their family, children and grandchildren. C, here are the major capital budget improvement activities initiated by House and Beach. One, during 2019, showcase guest room renovation, lodge south wing window replacement, and additional kayaks, paddle boards, and paddle boats for use at the beach without charge. Two, during 2020, lodge north wing window replacement, B, lodge exterior building painting, C, great room furniture replacement. D, guest room mattress replacement, first of two annual phases. And E, the kitchen heating, exhaust slash air makeup system replacement. <coughs> These committee's activities could not have been accomplished without the enthusiasm and hard work of our members, Shelby Fela, Andy Shimko, Mitch Spring, Lynn Michael, and Mary Beth Grossfield, in addition to our general manager. Respectfully submitted, Carrie O'Toole. Thank you, Charlie. That brings us up to promotions, and I think, Dick, you're going to cover that report? Yeah, now we're going to combine this with the, the committee one below, right? Yes. So, uh, all right, so let's go. All right, I'm going to put a few footnotes in because we're combining this with the committee for the uh, to try and reverse our membership loss also. Um, the two 2019 promotion committee was composed of four volunteers, and we had two vacancies. The four volunteers were Helen Zimmerman, Chair, Robert Fleming, Co-Chair, Emily Mason, Secretary, and Lori Grush. Um, one little note I'd like to have, promotion committees, I think we talked about, uh, we had a meeting the other day, and, and um, I think it's almost a misnomer. This really should be called the marketing committee, because this is what, what generating ideas for growing our club. And, and we really could use, because next year they only got two members carrying over. Uh, Helen Zimmerman and Bob Fleming are carrying over to the next year, and, and we have nobody signed up to volunteer. We could really use um, some members that have some marketing ability or some ideas on how to grow the club, and they, they're going to have four openings on that. Um, with that, our objectives this year uh, has focused on growing the membership. We have successfully completed the following initiatives. Reconciliation of Lost Lake Woods Club owned lots versus membership owned lots. Lost Lake Woods Club owned lots confirmed with tra tax records, discrepancies identified, uh, discrepancies identified, which were handed off to the staff for resolution. And I think the footnote on that, Ian, is that we, we've sold some of the lots. We offered them to members that, uh, that wanted to buy them that... Uh, they were basically t attached to their lots or next to their lots, and we have what about a hundred? You said, or um, yeah, that's a floating number. I don't have the exact count, but approximately a hundred, hundred and five. All right, we, so these are lots now that we can add memberships to to grow the membership because we we're running out of memberships to sell. So that was the one in initiative. The second one, 
um, the ambassador program, and Rhonda Romanetz did a great job on putting this together, created an amenity book for 10 volunteer ambassadors to use during tours to prospective new members. And what this was, was we'd have people come in and ask about membership or want to know, and, and we had no way of really taking them through. So now what Rhonda has done is they put together 10 people. They got a checklist of a trip to show them the whole club. So when somebody comes in here, they get the whole gamut from the horse program to the golf course to the shooting skills. And then the committee has created a card that the ambassador fills out and says, here's what the people were interested in. Here's what, you know, their, their length of interest is. This just came out, so some of you may not have seen this. <laughs> we, just did, we just did this at the meeting last night where they showed it to me the first time. But So the ambassador that shows them around will fill this out and then pass it on. Now, the passing on, we got to talk about a little bit. But So the, Rhonda did a great job, and we got 10 volunteers, and I think that's fantastic. Um, the... Uh, the monthly uh, Lost Lake Woods newsletter is being mailed to 19 area realtors in Alcona, Alpena, and Iosco County. And this came about a little bit. We had a realtor meeting here. Um, I think it was the Alcona, uh, Alpena, Alcona uh, Bank or something that, that sponsored it. And uh, they had 23 realtors came. It was supposed to be more, but it was a terrible day. And I got a chance to talk for 10 minutes to them which was not a whole lot of time, but tell them about Lost Lake. My first question was, how many of you know anything about Lost Lake? Two out of the 23 raised their hand, and these are from these counties right around here, which means our best-kept secret is killing us. Um, we've got to be able to reach these realtors and, and get them in. And, and it has a, a profound effect, number one, on increasing our realtor, our members potentially, but also increasing our values of our houses when you go to sell them. I mean, we're, we're giving these houses away versus what's outside the club, which is a shame. I and mean, we got all these assets, and our, our houses are cheaper than what's outside the club. So we've got to reach these realtors. So this is what uh, they're trying to do with, with this program as far as sending these, these Lost Lake Woods news out. But that's, I think, just a starter. We've got to reach out to them a little bit more and get them more involved in, in what we have to offer here. Um, but that's a good start. Um, they developed and recommended to the board an additional membership program, which we discussed, offering deferred payment plan for initiation fee to be paid over installments of two years. The program will have a 12-month trial period, and we decided with Ian last night, and I think we've got to get approval of the board to do this, Ian, to this program we talked about? No. No? All right. So we're going to start January 1st with a trial program where somebody can pay their, their dues, not their dues, but their, their initiation fee into the club over a two-year period on installments. So, and we'll see how it works. At the end of 12 years, they can, I mean, at the end of a year, 12 months, they can evaluate it and decide whether we want to continue it, whether it has any value. Just to um, clarify, um, the board has already approved it. So we, okay, it's all right. Um, develop and recommend to the board an additional membership. Oh, it's one we already talked about. Um, promotions committee members are available to provide tours and answer questions regarding Lost Lake Woods at various events at the club. Uh, the music festival, the car show, the realtor luncheon. Seven tours are provided by ambassadors to prospective members at the music festival and car show. And I heard last night that one of those uh, uh, tours resulted in a uh, person joining the club. So, um, all right. Additional, additional, and above completed goals. The committee continues to pursue the following objectives: revision to the to the new member application forms. This is simply uh, something we talked about as a board. When somebody applies for membership, there's just not enough information to talk to them when you, when you call them up to interview about membership. We'd like to know a little bit where they're employed, maybe how long they've been employed there, what some of their interests are. So you're kind of calling them cold turkey instead of having a better interview with them. So this, they're, they're working on this, and they think they'll be done with that in a month or so. The ambassador uh, process is enhanced, uh, process is enhanced, rolled out uh, the use of the feedback cards, which I showed you, for ambassadors to complete and provide pertinent information to the Lost Lake staff for sales follow-up. This would be used to consolidate the listing of potential new members for future uh, sales 
communications, as well as to provide data on the ambassador process. This is where we've got a little bit of a problem in that we don't have a uh, membership uh, follow-up employee, and we don't need to add that expense. But that means we need some volunteer help to fill in to that. So when these ambassador cards get passed on, somebody can call up the people and say, hey, how would you like your tour of the club? And, you know, what, uh, what other questions can you answer? Can we answer for you? I think where this could be enhanced, and we talked about this also, which isn't in here, where this could be enhanced is if we had some experts on the different uh, parts of our club. So if you find out somebody is really interested in the skeet and trap shooting or whatever, they could call Kevin or they could, you know, call Scott. We get we, So we have some people with expertise in these area, a golf, few golf people. So if somebody says, oh, I'm really interested in golf, okay, you have a golf person that, that can relay that passion to them. If it's horses, maybe it's Tammy. But we need to get some people lined up that have expertise in an area because you can always – generate that enthusiasm when you're talking to somebody that, that has the same f passions that you do. So we're looking to do to do that. Um, then pending a new, um, new website release, below are the objectives that should be aligned with this website, require continuity of information providing to the new interested new members. Um, revise new member packets. So we need a packet for for possible new members. Even if you're having a wedding here, we need to have these packets available where people can pick them up as they're going into the wedding or coming out the door or whatever. It says if you're interested in membership, they take a packet, and they're working on that. Uh, revising it, that would go in this packet is a new Lost Lake Woods brochure. And then um, the process to provide the welcome to the neighborhood letter. All right, this is something new that they're working on. They are working with, I think, Bob Fleming, has access to anybody that's bought a house in Alpena, Alcona, and Iosco County right now. He would have a, a thing if they closed on their house or their piece of land. So we're going to send them out a welcome to the neighborhood letter. And what we had talked about offering in this letter, welcome to the neighborhood, hey, right near your, your location is a great club, come and visit us. And we're going to offer um, one of the following that they could pick, a round of golf for two people for free, a round of skeet or trap for two people for free, or a horseback ride for two people for free, and then either a luncheon for the for the two people or a dinner for the two people to try and get them into our club and show them what's out there. So anybody that closes on a piece of property in those three counties would be getting this welcome to the neighborhood. Um, so that that's pretty much the written report. What I'd like to add on the thing is I think that Brian Deutsch will hit a, a very important point. We're trying to get to 1,100 members, but basically this club is supported by about 400 members, give or take. And the way to look at that is just look at the votes. I mean, look at the votes, the number of people who even vote for the board of directors. It's always right around 400. The people that are spending the money in this club are about 400. If we had 900 active members that were using the club, playing golf and, and shooting skeet and trap and riding horses, we wouldn't need 1,100 members, but obviously that's not going to happen. Um, so we've got a, our theory is obviously, I think if you're a new member, you're going to be more enthusiastic. Some of the people that have just lost their enthusiasm are just kind of, you know, don't get up here. They live in Florida now and they don't get up here or whatever. But we've got to get more active members. Um, to do this, the website's coming on, which is very important with today's new age stuff. I mean, uh, that's been proved to me different businesses a number of times that, that everybody goes to the Google something, Google Lost Lake. So we need a new website that's easy to manipulate through so you're not lost in it and presents our new ideas and ideas that we can keep up to date. So Ian said about two weeks from that and uh, uh, approximately two weeks. And then I know that the, this Lodge thing we've talked about a lot, but it's really important. I've been a member here 52 years. You probably heard me say that before. And those lodge rooms, other than carpeting and paint, have not changed in 52 years. And I asked the board, and I'll ask you, how many of you would stay in those rooms the way they are now? There's no TV. You know, they're, they're, they're pretty Spartan. And we can, we can do them nice. There are walls that come out where we can make sweets, and we can put a mini bar in there. So if you've got kids, they can get up in the morning and have a yogurt. And if you want coffee late, 
there's some stuff we can do. But we also need to do some stuff for our members to make them more active. Maybe we need a, a coffee bar up here. There's a lot of, lot of stuff on the table. I'm not going to go through that. But we do need to rejuvenate this lodge. It's been way too long. And I'm talking to the choir here because you guys are obviously interested in the club or you wouldn't be here. I'm really like trying to reach the people that aren't here. But we've got to spend some money on this club. I mean, it, it, and we've got to look at it for those of us that have cabins. We've got to do these rooms, too, because... If we sell a cabin, we don't gain a member, we trade a member. We lose one, we gain one. you got to get people either outside the club that have a house on Hubbard Lake or, or down in Oscoda that will come up and use the club. That's a new member. Or we got to get people to stay in, the, in this lodge. Um, and then, like I say, we need to get more realtor exposure somehow. How we do that by maybe having some luncheons up here for some of these realtor things and be able to expose it to them. But... They've already got people looking up here. That's our least expensive way of finding, of finding things, and our security is a big part of that. So I guess with that, I've kind of expanded on, on the two. We killed two birds with one stone. But uh, anything that, that uh, enthusiasm that you people can do and, and help to, to build the, the idea of getting this lodge and some of this stuff done is sure going to help us if we need to, to halt this loss of membership. Okay, thanks, Dick. Thanks for your passion. Uh, next committee is the members committee. Uh, I see we've got a summary of income statement. But I've, I've got some notes to expand on. For okay, like thanks, Nick. Um, another fantastic year for the members committee due to the hard work of everybody on the committee. Uh, Marlene Rogers has uh, decided to step down as the chair from that committee and take a break. Uh, she certainly deserves a ton of credit for all her leadership and the hard work that she has done, uh, as well as her husband, uh, Greg, and the other people on the committee. Uh, that committee does still need a couple volunteers now. In particular, uh, there's really been an express need around the um, garage sale, the tent sale, for some strong backs. I'm going to say men, not to be sexist, but what was told to me was we need more men helping out there to move things around. So... Uh, please give that some consideration for next year. Uh, quick review of what they uh, were able to accomplish this year was aside from uh, just funding many projects and equipment from the other committees. Um, in June, you had the pole, bar rate, the pole barn raising celebration, of uh, which they contributed $33,000 to the creation of that building. Uh, raised more money in July through the quilt raffle. Uh, there was a Lost Lake Woods uh, logo quilt made by Marlene Rogers raffled off. In August, the member picnic potluck, volunteers set up, cleaned up, supported first annual bluegrass water, or bluegrass festival in August by selling water. Uh, September annual tent sale. Tent sale raised approximately $10,000 in funds. I mean, that's really quite incredible. Uh, the responsible for Oktoberfest activities are in helping in that. The beautiful decorations that you see for Christmas and for Halloween are a result of the committee's efforts. Um, the uh, uh, cans and bottles, which I don't know if everybody realizes how much work goes into that. Um, already <coughs> this year, by putting out that trailer and going through a lot of, let's say, uh, dirty work to organize that, $6,400 in cans and bottles this year. Um, you know, I know Gothiers in particular and uh, Rogers in the past have kind of uh, spearheaded that, and we're going to need some volunteers for that. But that's out of their efforts alone, just from those two efforts, is nearly sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars, and probably closer to eighteen by the end of the year. Uh, through the quilt raffle, it was three hundred thirty dollars. Craft show raffle and the um, and the water sales four hundred ninety one. Uh, table tent or table rental there was six hundred seventy-five dollars. Oh, excuse me, I read that wrong. Total craft show revenue of fourteen hundred and ninety-six. Um, total income for two thousand nineteen was nineteen thousand. They began the year with forty-one thousand two sixty-one, and again they could use volunteers. Hats off and congratulations to that committee for doing just a ton of work. It's appreciated. Well, thank you, Nick, and thanks to the committee. Uh, we'll move on to campgrounds. Andy? Good 
Good afternoon. Um, Andy Newman, Campground Committee Chairman. <clears throat> this year was a rather quiet year in the campground. We didn't complete any major projects. We did, however, continue to improve the overall condition of the campground. Uh, we completed the painting of all the lot marker posts, so they match our iconic fence posts, the red and white. Uh, we installed some additional split rail fencing where the two subdivision roads that terminate at the campground, so we've got one of those done. Uh, we treated the playground, the sand in the playground, it was getting a little bit overgrown and it was more grass than sand. Uh, we replaced several of the seats in the swing set, so we do see a lot of members come down and use our playground. So we took care of some of those, that equipment. Uh, we assisted the maintenance staff with uh, filling the potholes and getting the roads in a little bit better shape, so same thing that's happening in the subdivision. Uh, probably the biggest thing we did is we installed um, markers on the lot marker poles. So right now there's no check and balance system where you know if someone is paid or is not paid or if they should be on the site or should be on the site. So this is our first step in identifying that and we're going to work with registration upstairs at the front desk. So simple system like our state parks use, you get a tag, you slide it in the slot. You can simply go drive by and see whether that person has paid or not. Um, we have seen quite a bit of improvement in the, the grounds and the maintenance, so we'd like to thank uh, management, Ian and his crew, again, has come through for us out in the campground, just like they do for a lot of other things. Uh, we still strongly believe that the campground <coughs> is the gateway to Lost Lake Woods. So a lot of people come from the campground, move up to the, to the subdivision, but it's a, the real first step to becoming a member of Lost Lake Woods. Um, and again, we want to make sure that we make a, a good first impression, so that, that's why we, this is so important to us. Uh, we are a committee, and as you guys have said several times, the volunteers are very important, and really we could use some help. So we, um, we're open to we invite all members to come on down and join us in the campground for our committee meetings, our little work bees. You don't have to be a resident of the campground. We are not a standing committee, so you don't have to go through and fill out a bunch of paperwork. We're just looking for input from everybody on what they think should be done and how we can make the campground better. So um, thank you for your time, and that's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Kevin, you're up uh, shooting sports, and we'll start with Skeet and Trap. Kevin Frittle is going to present Skeet and Trap. Uh, first, before I get started, I'd like to say thank you to the board members who volunteer all their time for, uh, for the benefit of the club. We appreciate all you do. Um, in addition to that, I'd like to say thank you to the committee members, um, Warren Richter, Jason Baskerville, um, Leroy Medica, Connor Sherm, and Sally Hubbard, who have been instrumental in the shooting sports, uh, the shotgunning sports here at Lost Lake Woods for over 40 years. This year we made uh, some huge improvements at the shotgun range, uh, mostly making the best of our capital budget by the aesthetics painting the buildings down at the shotgun range. A group of us went to another uh, shooting, shooting presentation down in a different part of the state and realized how easy our uh, buildings, how our range could benefit from a paint job both aesthetically and preserving block. Uh, it's turned out to be a wonderful uh, thank you for the, to the Finance Committee and the Board for approving those capital funds, and in particular Jason Baskerville and his son Cole, who single-handedly, the two of them painted that. Not, not one person lifted it. I, I did a little trim work around the door to say I helped, and that was it. Those two did all the work down there. Uh, we also spent capital funds to replace an obsolete non-working uh, rabbit machine target launcher, one of the eight target machines on the five stand cores. Uh, in years prior it didn't work, the uh, cords were bad, uh, it, it kept jamming up and bottom line there is it's very labor intensive and it caused us not to have a lot of uh, shooting uh, at, the, at the five stand. So with this new machine and the wireless releases uh, there's a, a significant increase in rounds which I'll explain in a moment. We also replaced um, all the wired launches for the 
uh, ski and five stand course to wireless wireless releases. So a couple things. There's this much more efficient from a manual from a labor standpoint, particularly the five stand. We're not rolling cables out to every one of those eight machines. We have the, the electronics are all set up. We just pull out the machine, hit the button, and, it, and once we plug it in, it's, it it's goes. So much more efficient on that. We also purchase a wired system for the track range. So it's a wired voice activated system, which uh, for a couple things, a few benefits that it has. One, it is more consistent. Uh, being voice activated when someone calls for a target, the response time is very consistent. Uh, some of our shooters that are registered shooters and trap, not many, um, do appreciate that. And the other thing that that has done is people that are experienced at the range can go and use that field, that facility, without having an employee present. So they can turn it on and uh, it's voice activated. So again, added to the efficiency at the range. Um, we had uh, significant increases most of the shooting disciplines for many reasons. Uh, one, we, for the first time since I've been involved, we've had two employees during the summer months between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Again, the five stand without a, it cannot be run with an employee, it has to be run by an employer volunteer. So uh, having the two employees, we were consistently able to have all of those disciplines all the shooting opportunities available to people that visited the range. The Canterbury system, or the voice activated system at the trap range, allowed shooters to shoot uh, without the aid of an employee. Uh, of an employee. Uh, guest rounds were increased uh, to, due to these efficiencies. So shooters were spending particular, they were spending time at the range, uh, but they were be able to shoot more rounds in that same hour, hour, two hours that they'd spend down there. So due to this, we had a lot of an increase in guest um, guest rounds. Uh, we also uh, invested a small amount of money in some plaques made by a local uh, craftsman, uh, Mr. Schramm, Jeffrey Schramm, some very nice uh, plaques for leagues. So uh, we, with the leagues, we that guarantees that anybody that signs up for that league shooting 10 rounds of trap, 10 rounds of ski, 10 rounds of five stand. So we had increases in those areas. Last but not least, we had uh, youth uh, shooter and 4-H rounds increased and probably most proud of our engagement in the community with some of the youth shooters and uh, particularly the 4-H program. Uh, this year's 4-H program, uh, probably wearing their uniform that they wore at the state shoot. Uh, as I mentioned to somebody else, this is a little more profound on the spec guys. But Lost Lake <laughs> was very uh, prominent because they practiced here all year. Uh, and they, they went to the competition, won the state, the team competition, and we had one gentleman that shot 50 out of 50 and won the individual uh, honors as well. So that combined with the, um, probably the Canadian trap shoe, which benefits the high school, the Alpina hockey team, um, is, is uh, really puts Lost Lake Woods out there. One of the other benefits, I better stop walking around and get back to the bike. One of the other benefits, um, during our visit to the state shoot, we talked to uh, the organizers of the 4-H state shoot. They're going to be splitting that off from the archery. They're going to have the shooting uh, sports as one venue and the archery somewhere else, so they're going to split that. So we are entertaining the opportunity to host that event, uh, 50 to 100 shooters and their families. So we're, go we're working on that. And that's probably a possibility for 2021, probably not next year. So we're really excited about that as well. So that being said, we had some, uh, I'll just go with numbers real quick. Um, 2019 member rounds in the heat were pretty similar. Where we gained up, where we gained were guest rounds, people coming from the outside with the leagues and increased shooting. Uh, we had a 6% increase, not a huge. We've got a great following in ski right now, so it's not uh, not an area we're going to improve a whole lot. We see a big improvement this year in the trap rounds for two reasons. One, again, the voice-activated system allows us not, we don't have to have an employee there. People don't have to wait as long to, to be able to shoot. And two, the leagues uh, gave us a 50% increase, uh, 334 from 169 the year before. Uh, five stands, similar, similar numbers. Uh, again, because of that rabbit machine not working half the time, uh, 
you know, shot, you know, the cord's getting shot up with that wireless system. Those two things, uh, we went from 100, uh, from 46, we doubled the rounds, member rounds, and more than tripled our guest rounds in five stands. So a 61% increase there. Uh, very proud of that. And again, probably one of the most significant increases, I think the thing that we had the most impact on here is, and in our community are the youth rounds, and that is driven primarily by our relationship with the local 4-H team. So um, our special shoots were pretty much, they are pretty even. Uh, part of that is uh, communication on our part. The committee didn't do as well as we did the year before, and I was trying to hand some of that off and uh, we can do, we'll do a little better next job, a little better job next year of uh, the special events and particularly the communication on those. So again, an all, all around a great year and looking for another uh, good things in 2020. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, Kevin. Good job. <coughs> right. <coughs> you have anything you'd like to say about the rifle range, Doyle? I did not prepare a report <coughs> that puts but, me. But, but you're Bad here. Shape, uh, uh, standing uh, behind our, our friend, uh, Mr. Frittle. I, I guess uh, offhand, I, I would comment, you know, most of our activities have been primarily focused around Memorial Day and maintaining the range. Um, of course, I, I don't have a full list of volunteers. I have been posting that on Facebook as it, as it usually happens. Uh, certainly want to thank, you know, there's some real staunch supporters, my wife, Donna, is uh, always there, as well as our friend Scott and his wife Brenda. You can always count on them. Um, my buddy Jeff Stamper. Uh, we have others that, that come from time to time. So certainly appreciate those strong volunteers. But I, it would not be appropriate to talk about the rifle range without uh, noting one volunteer who over the years has, has contributed so much, and that's Nick Catchman. Uh, over the years, you know, we've had those silent volunteers. Uh, Alcorn Jr., for example, has done some things, doesn't ask for credit, doesn't put his name out there, you know, improving the, the bench rest. But Nick Catchman in particular, our range has always had a beautiful dark green on it for many years, decades. Many of you may notice that we haven't had that, and uh, Nick is, has been locked in a battle with cancer. And... <clears throat> Nick has uh, foregone further treatment on that, and so he, he won't be with us a lot longer. But I, I certainly wanted to, to note Nick and keep him in your prayers. Thank you, Doyle, and we'll definitely do that. Uh, <clears throat> Dave Lucas uh, prepared a report for archery, and I'll read that. Um, <clears throat> this year we were able to purchase three new 3D animal targets, three bag targets, and three broadhead targets. We try to purchase at least three animal targets yearly to replace our aging target herd. The ones that we've purchased in the past several years will last longer than the older style, and eventually we'll have rotated them all out. It seems like we've had more activity at the archery range this year and lots of positive comments from the users. We allowed the local 4-H youths to use our range again this year and a total of $220 in user fees were collected so far this year. Uh, we would encourage everyone to come and visit and use the range. We keep the 3D targets out from Memorial Day through the end of September. However, the practice range is open year-round. We have uh, one of the best ranges in northeastern Michigan, and we thank the board and membership for their support. Sincerely, the Archery Committee. And it is neat. Uh, it's a nice little retreat in the woods to use your bow in. Okay, the next is uh, subdivision and grounds. Tammy is going to present that. Uh, the sub and grounds committee consists of myself as the chair, Frank DeBole, and Jack Koska. Our committee is supported by board liaison Amanda Galbraith. If anyone else is willing to help on the committee, please contact one of those mentioned above. So far this year, we have had 21 building applications that included additions on homes, new garages and sheds, decks and driveways in the subdivision with one request from the campground. There were a couple of projects that were built or installed without building applications being submitted, which resulted in complaints needing to be addressed. 
We have also addressed complaints through the club. Some of the issues were blight, signs, junk vehicles, abandoned or damaged homes, use of tents and campers in side yards, and lack of lawn maintenance. We published a newsletter article about Alcona Township's ordinance, the club's bylaws, and the rules and regulations so that the members are, are aware of and will correct these violations prior to board action. Management took the lead in the resolution of many of the concerns. The township zoning administrator was asked to help with some of the issues that involved these violations, and in many instances, the situations were corrected. When members wish to make improvements to their driveways, they need to fill out a building application and have the Southern Grounds Committee come out to make sure the plan does not change the drainage that may affect others throughout the club. There are properties that have culverts that are no longer working properly or have become buried. These situations need to be addressed if and when driveways are improved. When members wish to install a fence, it must be approved to make sure it not only meets the club regulations but also the townships. If you change location of a shed or other outbuildings, you not only need to fill out a building application but have a land use permit issued. This is a this is much better to fill out a building application and seek permission than to have to tear something down and relocate it because it doesn't meet the requirements. Anytime you wish to place a shed, deck, or other improvements to your home, cabin, cottage, or campsite, please fill out the building application so we have it on file and can address any issues before a complaint is issued. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Then uh, I had uh, put on the agenda an opportunity for each of our uh, 2019 board special objective teams and committees to uh, report out on. Uh, Dick has already done the, the one on the membership decline, but uh, the uh, first one uh, on the list is improving the quality of food and beverage services, which we've touched on already in a couple of places. So I don't know if you anything you want to add, Amanda? We say kudos. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Uh, then we had to develop a comprehensive plan for lodge rejuvenation. Uh, Doyle was leading that effort. I think we've talked a lot about uh, the accomplishments, and but more importantly, where we're headed. Uh, we'll, uh, I have a very brief presentation. Let's yeah. Just brief, because it'll be if, if you have that that up. Uh, basically, just reflected on you know sometimes uh, we all get a little uh, frustrated with where we're at, or maybe we're not moving fast enough. Particularly on this topic, has been out there for a long time. Uh, just to reflect, this committee was formed back in February. Since then, we've done the the sho showcase room opening. We did a couple of town halls, one in April and one in May and we had a, a recommendation in June. So uh, with that, uh, a detailed plan, development plan was delegated to the management. A sort, uh, support team was put in place to assist Ian, the manager advisory panel. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we're uh, basically at this point uh, assisting Ian uh, in putting together uh, a ballot that talks about the location, the cost, the operation and maintenance when we can get it done in the environmental impact. Um, and then uh, the next slide uh, just goes and shows uh, the specifics as approved by the board. This is what that, that advisory panel is doing. And, and then the, the timing chart is uh, the one that Ian presented earlier. So with that, just a, a quick synopsis to say uh, we've come a long ways and, and uh, we're about to, to see how we measure our progress with a ballot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, then we have uh, <coughs> hosting the inaugural Blue Bluegrass Music Festival. I think everybody knows that was a, a great event, and uh, Nick was leading a team of volunteers that were instrumental in putting that on. <coughs> you have uh, anything you want to report on that, Nick? Yeah, just real quick. Thanks again to all the volunteers that helped. It did turn out very successful. And uh, we continue to get requests for next year, when you're going to have it, et cetera. Uh, we can answer a few of those questions. August 15th is going to be the date of the event next year. Uh, we already have Brothers Walker, Dave Adkins, and Breaking Grass um, signed for the event. 
Uh, Brothers Walker and Dave Atkins were there last year. Uh, if you take a peek on YouTube or on the Internet, you'll find Breaking Grass, and I think everybody will really be impressed with them as well. We're working on the fourth band now. Um, we're going to keep that in our pocket, not say anything until we have uh, them signed. We'll also be hosting a Friends of the Festival party to um, kind of uh, keep the momentum going and raise some funds to support the festival. We have already begun talking to potential um, sponsors to help fund the event. There will be a banner for Friends of the Festival, so if you you if you'd like to have your family's name on that event or on that banner, just contact myself or Ian. And if you have any uh, potential sponsors, please direct those to Ian or myself as well. And we look forward to releasing more information soon and having another great event. Thank you. Looking forward to next year's installment. It should be great. Okay, and our uh, last special ob objective committee was uh, Bob DeMillionaire was leading the team uh, trying to facilitate uh, some of the major uh, projects we had on the plate for the 2019 subdivision. Okay, uh, Scott has already touched on these in his president report, so I'll just go through real quick. Uh, our group was uh, tasked with three major uh, items to accomplish, uh, the first being to assist in the design and construction of the club storage building. Uh, we worked as a group uh, along <coughs> with Ian uh, in the design of the building and the, the ways to bring the project within the budget constraints. Uh, the second item was to address gate security and overall level of security within the club. Uh, the, this group de developed a security survey that was sent out to the membership. Some valuable information was gathered from this to assess member expectations and to aid in the establishment of the duties and responsibilities of club security. Uh, last item, which is going to be the one that's going to be ongoing, uh, is to address the subdivision roads and drainage. Uh, the group met several times, uh, studied topographic maps of the subdivision and on-site meeting with the manager of the road commission to assess the conditions of the roads and drainage problems. Uh, the club has contracted an engineering firm to assess and give recommendations on three high priority areas for 2020. Um, as I heard earlier this morning, uh, the engineering firm should be on site uh, probably next week uh, to begin that. Uh, the members of this committee are Tammy Hurt Mandika, Doug Wilson, Dave Wright, Phil Plank, and myself. I would like to take this time to thank them for a great job and their commitment to these projects. Um, all of these members bring uh, a certain expertise uh, to these three um, objectives, and I want to thank them. Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, on the agenda, we had no member delegations, unfinished business, or new business, and we strategically put the announcement of the election results last so people would stay. And, <laughs> and you're so, 11 minutes ahead of schedule. I am? No, I, I it said 240. No, 2.40, but we're, 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 we're close. So uh, Dave Kirchie uh, uh, led the Tellers Committee this morning and uh, appreciate their efforts. Uh, Ian has the results to present in his absence. Uh, yes, uh, Dave Kirchie presented the, the Tellers results to the board in an executive session earlier. He is unable to be here this afternoon, uh, so I will present the report on his behalf. Um, the Tellers Committee performed its duties on Saturday, October the 19th, 2019, in accordance with the bylaws. The total number of ballot envelopes in the hands of the Tellers Committee at 8 a.m. was 406. During the validation process, 10 ballots were rejected for the following reasons. Five had no identity and five were delinquent members. After opening the outer envelopes, the number of ballots remaining to be tallied was 396. This exceeds the 100, the number of members required for a quorum. The three candidates elected with the number of votes were as follows. Bob de Millionaire, 274 votes. Ryan Pender, 269 votes. William Hogan, 246 votes. The other two candidates with the number of votes were Sherm Hubbard, 231, and Susan Haight, 158. All ballots and tally sheets are being retained under lock 
for 15 days, i.e. until November the 20th, 2019, unless otherwise directed. Members of the TELUS Committee, all members in good standing, were uh, uh, Dave, Dave, Corgi, Dave Corgi, Jack Koska, Fred Palin, Crystal and Bob Roos, Ben Sink, Becky Basinger, Roland Lapko, Lydia Lucas, Bonnie Lancaster, and Kathy Court, Court, Kirchie. Thank you. Thank you for reading that, Ian, and congratulations, Bob, Ryan, and Bill. Uh, <clears throat> oh, congratulations. I'm looking forward to working with you all next year. Kind of uh, outline some of the key objectives. I'm sure we'll find more. Um, but I want to also thank the, the people that didn't make it, Chairman Susan, for stepping up and volunteering to take on this important job in the club. So. Uh, with that, I think we're at the end of the prepared agenda. If I could get a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 There are none opposed. Meeting is adjourned. First one I was on time. Hey. See, practice makes it. We got all back on track. I know. I'm sorry. Everybody broke out. Well, I just want to make sure. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you. And and then we're heading to North Dakota. Yes. Good job, Scott. Get through that. Thank you. You probably got a couple of guys waiting for you. Retirement's not fun.